My name is Jean Munson and I am a cartoonist and local publisher. I have been working in my field, I would say I took it real serious in 2010 and I graduated in 2009 as a history major with the intent to be a teacher and 2009 was the time where it was the recession and I had to be real creative with what to do with my degree so I decided to pursue art at that time which is now 10 years ago. There's a lot of best parts to my profession. Um, one, I find myself doing art that I would never do. You know, currently I'm working with the Vegas Theater Company on a cockroach comic strip. Um, I've gotten to do murals. I've gotten to do like a publication about funny obituaries, and I got to do like cover art for like Star Wars and stuff. And so I always find myself in these like fun predicaments and getting paid for it. Um, that's the fun, the best part is getting paid to do what I love to do. The second part are like the friendships that come out of it, um, especially in the time of pandemic where people are really trying to be creative and innovative and return to being um, artists because they've shelved that in pre-pandemic time. Um, and the third, my, my favorite part, you know, because I also teach at UNLV, um, Fundamentals of Design, is that I feel like there's a psychological level or connection that I get to have um, in my profession because we're, we're storytelling and it causes me to have more empathy and longer discussions about things that people can digest through art, right? So sometimes we can understand maybe the pandemic or family problems because we read it in pictures um, that aren't always easily said in paragraphs or words. So I feel like I get to be at least an advocate for things that people can articulate in words. I think my profession is super crucial and super important because it is the one thing that crosses languages and cultures um, because um, human body language is universal, right? In the way that discomfort looks or like joy looks, right? And so being able to um, also, um, what do you call this, like also preserve that in art, especially, you know, during the pandemic, I did a series of Corin comics, you know, it's called Corin Jean, and, you know, to just really, um, like, take account of, like, emotional eating at this time, or fear, or anxiety, and, um, and humanizing that, right, because sometimes these things are isolating, especially during social distancing, so that, I think that the art component combined with like the historical component puts a real emphasis on me because like I mean even just thinking of project like the project of projecting the future of what I do right like I mean the work that I could do could end up in a textbook someday you know it's not beyond the scope of being creative like we are constantly creating evidence um, for the future so welcome to Pandemic Picture Making with Jean Munson. Um, I just wanna let you know some of the things that you may need um, so you can pull it together and then take a pause to get these materials around your house. Don't go to an art store and like buy $20 worth of, <laughs> or even more than that. So you just wanna get a regular notebook, maybe even a notebook you already use. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, don't waste trees, okay? Um, the other thing you may need is just like a regular pencil um, whatever coloring materials you have, they do not have to be this marker. Um, they can be crayons, you know, whatever's around the house, even the broken crayon, use it. Um, and then you want like perhaps pens. Um, so the reason I call it pandemic picture making is one, maybe it's cause you're drawing the pandemic. Two, maybe you want to articulate these feelings about the pandemic on it. Um, and I thought there was a third reason. It's probably not. So we're going to use this old trusty notebook. Remember, um, remember three rules before we start. Number one, practice positive self-talk. If you're like, oh, I'm drawing, like you're not gonna get through this exercise. Like take a step back and just be like, okay, whatever goes, whatever happens, say la vie, I'm here. Um, number two, if you don't erase, just put an X mark and we'll, I'll show you when we're drawing, just put an X mark because um, you having to tear another paper, that really does something to your psychology, right? Like you're just like, oh, not good enough, not good enough. I mean, you're basically spanking yourself and we don't want that on this exercise. And the third thing too is if you can't think of anything, and this is an exercise that the cartoonist Linda Berry um, invented, is you just put little uh, swirls 
Um, and I'll show you that too. And that just gets you cognitively going, your drawing muscle. Um, your doctor might not say you have a drawing muscle, but it's there, I swear. So um, yeah, let's get started. So let's, for example, uh, regular pencil. Okay, so I'm drawing something. Uh, I just, I hate it, right? I just hate it. I don't actually hate it. But so if I don't like it, I'm just gonna draw an X over it. And the reason that is, is because as you progress from this day of teaching and you turn back the pages 10 years from now, you can look at where you started, right? So this is important, especially in terms of thinking and preserving museum style, right? And so for example, oh my gosh, Jean Munson's telling me to draw. I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna swirl through, right? I'm just gonna keep swirling, keep moving along. So if I get through maybe 20 minutes of this video and you still haven't drawn something and you're just doing this, that's fine too, right? Because you're also engaging your pencil. Okay, let's get started. I'm just gonna put this, I'm just gonna call this pandemic picture making. Okay, ta-da. Now, we gotta establish you as a character, right? So maybe you guys are all like anime fanatics and know how to draw, but for our people who are really basic, it's okay to use the Ivan Bernetti style, which is a basic circle and somewhat of a triangle. This could just be you, right? And you can think of all the ways you can modify this, right? So for example, I'm gonna put regular dot eyes, a happy face. I got these circly glasses, right? You can, it doesn't have to be, you know, Instagram level influencer, um, drawings, right? It can be just real regular. Here's me and my ponytail. It's basically taking what we would see as a stick figure in just two shapes. This is me. Wait, I have a mole here and some glass, um, some glass, more of this glasses. Oh, I have an eyebrow too. This could just be me, right? So this is the person I'm gonna use throughout today's exercise. Totally okay. The reason um, it's simple is all right because I can draw this particular character with its two shapes many times today when I'm picture pandemic picture making, right? So go ahead, I'll give you some time to kind of figure that out. Don't overthink it. Don't be like, oh, the eye wasn't good enough. Just cross it out and draw another set, set of yourself, right? It shouldn't, the more time you spend overthinking, the less time you're having fun drawing. All right, we're gonna just create three boxes here. Do, do, do. You don't need to get a ruler and be super perfect. Three boxes. Everything is about basic shapes when cartooning. That's how we'll move this along. Okay, so in these three boxes, we're gonna create a simple story. But before we get to drawing, right, sometimes we spend so much time drawing in this box that we're tired by the time we get to these two boxes. So you wanna create a little to-do list here of what's gonna happen. Okay, I'll put one, two, three here. Okay, so one through three, I'm just gonna tell you how basic storylines happen in comics. You're going to set up your character here, character and setting. Okay, that's number one. So this is, I'm, I'm, this is the teaching part, and this is the work part. Doo -doo -doo. I know my, my handwriting's hopefully readable. Okay, so then this is the plot twist. What I mean by plot twist? Plot twist means that something funny or peculiar or surprising is gonna happen here. And number three, resolution. Ta-da! Um, before we move on to this work part, why did I need this pen? So we can redefine, if anyone knows what tracing is, that's what you're gonna do with this pen. So I can, I colored in my eyes. If I wanna add a little more detail, look, they're pupils now, they're not just black dots. There are some eyelashes. With the pen, you can start to carve out the pencil into to more definitive shapes, right? I'm gonna make these thick rim glasses. So I'm gonna go over and over and over again. Do, do, do. We're just refining with the pen. 
give you time. I'm sure some of you are still working on this character. I can color in this hair. I have black hair. Thanks, mom and dad. And then this little ponytail and coloring that in, right? So forth. So you can spend time, give myself a little bit of a rounder face, right? So we can make this little open mouth into a tongue, right? So you can use your pen to just modify and add detail. Right? Um, okay, so let's think about the storyline. So this was me just, this is the basic formula of just comics in general. And the reason why we're not doing a full page of comics is the comic strip, which is just three to um, one panels, is basically what we call a sentence as a cartoonist, right? So when you think of a graphic novel or manga, that's a paragraph, right? And this is considered a sentence. All right, let's get to going. So for example, I wanna think about perhaps online school is my title. Online school, right? So character setting, I'm in my bedroom studying, right? Okay, so plot twist, what's something peculiar that can happen um, while I'm in my bedroom studying? Um, my dog shows up, dog shows up. Okay, so it's me versus the dog. So when we think about the resolution, it doesn't mean that uh, everything's resolved. You can, you can create a joke at the end, right? So I'm gonna put my dog licks my face. Right? And when we think about perhaps just contact with another creature, especially in the pandemic, that can be kind of funny, right? So the dog doesn't just have to act like a dog. The dog can also talk to me. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we're just using the pencil. Basic shapes. Here's my head, here's my body, and here's my legs, right? Doo -doo -doo. It's okay, again, to use basic shapes. We're thinking about the desk. The desk is, can be a three-dimensional cuboid. See how this comes out of the panel? That's okay, right? Because um, this indicates that this is a story. So it's okay to be outside the lines. All right, so we're also thinking about the laptop, which is also just a series of squares. Everything is a series of these basic shapes, circle, triangle, square, rectangle, everything in your life. I mean, this notebook, these markers are cylinders, right? All basic shapes. Okay, so here's basically my laptop and me. I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw a mask here on it. Do to do, my glasses. Okay, here's me. Um, then I'm gonna repeat the same thing, right? No brainer, just me as a stick figure, which I will flesh out later, doing the same thing. But I left a little room here for my dog friend. See how these pencils overlap? You can use your pen to clean up that moment, right? So here's my glasses, my mask, my hair. And my dog is a basset hound, so I'm just gonna use, again, a simple shape we're gonna put a little schnauzer thing, right? If some of you have dogs who have long schnauzers, um, you know, basic shapes again to make this face. So she shows up. We're gonna put her little paw here. My, okay. And I'll flesh out the details, but again, we're just mapping out. I'm just moving along. I'm not still staying on panel one to make it perfect. Just getting the basic shapes on here, okay? So I'm gonna put me again but I'm gonna put a little slight change. So see where my eye goes? And you can use any storyline. If it helps, you can just put yourself at a computer and then you can choose what happens in box two or three. So I'm gonna put my dog again, but this time her mouth is open with her tongue, right? Basic shapes. If you're like, um, this lady cannot draw, don't worry, I swear I can and I'll clean it up. Basic Ivan Brunetti, right? My little um, triangle body, my arms, my legs. So really quick, what do you mean by Ivan Brunetti? Oh yeah, so he created the simple shape of 
he uses simple shapes to create bodies. Okay. So that's why we just use a circle and a triangle. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so it's basically like your regular, um, <laughs> your regular stick person, but with more meat on them, mm -hmm. which you're welcome to use if that's more your jam. Um, but yeah, great question. <laughs> I'm just like, I remember Nettie, did you find him on the street? <laughs> Um, so my, my, my dog has kind of an oval body, so here she is. She's licking me, right? And I'll give us some word balloons. These are little word balloons. Um, I could put gross, I love you, and she can, let's, let's let her say something. She'll say so tasty, right? It can, you don't have to um, create philosophies in this last one, right? Okay. So I'm giving you some time to catch up here. Um, and I'm gonna pull out my pen, right? So let's say, come on, I have thicker legs than this, right? So let's throw some pants on me. So I'm gonna just draw. I'm not gonna eliminate that pencil, but here's, oh man, let me get a better, is this eight? Okay, so I obviously have thicker legs, which I'll give the liberty, I, you know, um, I still kept my triangle. I put a little sleeve on my... So again, I'm just carving. Carving. Look at my fingers too. I basically have frog fingers, right? And when we think about Disney, most characters have four fingers. So don't think like, oh God, it's not anatomically correct. Some of the best cartoons you enjoy only have a few human features. Right, so here's me and my glasses. So again, using a darker ink to just trace over your pencils is gonna be a-okay, right? And so you basically know that what I'll do is just in the second stage of after, okay, so first stage is pencils. Second stage is your pen. And what I like to do in the third stage, which we'll hop to it, is color, right? And so sometimes we think, I don't have a peach crayon, I don't have a brown crayon for flesh. Some of the greatest cartoons we enjoy have like green hair, right? Or um, pink hair. So feel at liberty to change it up, you know? Um, that's where creative creativity really lives, especially for all you possible um, anime or gaming people. Like you enjoy um, people who look slightly different and cosplay as them, right? So we're probably thinking, wait, this dog still doesn't look like a dog. So I'm gonna come in with my dark thing and give her more of these like lips, give her these cute little eyes, and she's basically a dog, right? So um, you can remember using simple shapes create storylines that really detail what's happening to you. And if they don't turn out perfect for you right then and there, imagine 20 years from now when people are like, oh my gosh, that's what it looked like to work from home or remotely or if your dog spoke to you or whatnot, right? So it's imperfect for a reason. You know, we've evolved a great deal um, since um, caveman days, right? And look now, we're like, watching Disney cartoons and whatnot with things that we love. So, for example, let's think, okay, um, the, what's it called? Um, in Ratatouille, right? Like, that's not really a rat. Like, <laughs> rats are not that cute, you know? But they turned that around. They humanized it. They made it their own. So don't ever think, like, what you're doing right now is not cool. Sometimes what happens is you're so talented, you are just desensitized to how great you are. And that's such a shame too, because a lot of people really give up on art because they're like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not like the animators in Disney. But I guarantee you, there's probably somebody at home who looks up to the way you draw and hopes that you can continue it. And so I'll tell you right now, a lot of my um, friends and even coworkers who hated that I did art are fans of me now because I did not quit. Um, so I hope you don't. I hope that. Maybe someday you'll get to the fourth, 10th, 11th panel or create a book in your life. But please, 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 you know, write first that crazy storyline and just start where you are. And you can make awesome comics. And I'm living in our community and 
open to any advice or mentorship that you may need. So have at it and have fun. What is the value of creating your own pandemic story? So sometimes, let, let's think first. When you're reading a comic and you're not even represented, re represented as a person of color in it, that story is speaking for you. But imagine if you tell the story, you're giving a whole scope or, uh, for a generation to understand that narrative you're living in, right? So no one understands what it's like to be a girl from Guam who immigrated to Nevada, right? But because I created that, somebody can pick the little pieces and begin to piece their own. And so that's why even for this pandemic thing, I mean, for you can detail how perhaps your parents have lost their jobs or how you miss your friends in high school or that you missed out on graduation. Like nobody else is writing that story. You know, like even creating stories, there's so many barriers to getting a story seen. But comics, you literally create three or four pictures, post it online, text it to a friend, fold it up, mail it to somebody. Somebody already has access to you. And that's the huge thing is that comics are accessible in a way of telling our stories, preserving history, and decompressing the stress that is existing right now.